So, Velma. A few days ago, HBO Max released an adult comedy take on Scooby-Doo following the Velma Denkley's origin. This show was meant for an audience, but no one on the internet seems to like it. And one thing that I personally love to do is rewrite things that I'm either really interested in or find really unappealing. And being that I looked on the 14th and saw my For You page on YouTube filled with Velma hatred, and the fact that I had been thinking of how I would write a Scooby-Doo reboot already, I figured this was the perfect opportunity to make a video. That being said, we will start with the characters. Just a disclaimer, this potential show would not focus on Velma, but the cast as a whole instead. This story follows a group of unlikely individuals, the gang, coming together when they're mixed into a murder. Because I feel these characters have no order of importance other than Scooby probably being the most important, we'll start with Shaggy. I want to basically keep all the characters mainly the same, keeping their personalities intact, unlike some other things that I've been released lately. Shaggy, which is still what he goes by, is pretty lazy and clumsy. He's a hippie and is terrified by any types of ghouls, ghosts, or monsters. He has a gigantic appetite due to his fast metabolism, and he spends most of his time doing everything, including his beloved eating, with his dog and best friend Scooby-Doo. Velma Dinkley is a genius in science and math. She's always loved doing research and solving mysteries, running her own mystery club, though it only has two members. She is always looking ahead, focusing on what's to come, despite her myopia causing her to do the exact opposite. Fred Jones is a natural-born leader. He is very multi-talented, having skills spanning from martial arts, acting, public speaking, fencing, football, and creating traps for some reason. He is incredibly street smart and is able to convince just about anyone of anything. Daphne Blake is your typical popular girl on the surface. She's a very critical thinker and loves to do things on her own. She has a better fashion sense than what you think is physically possible and loves a taste of danger. Scooby-Doo is a dog with a big heart and an even bigger stomach. Much like his owner Shaggy, he is terrified of the supernatural and prefers to spend his time doing nothing but eating Scooby snacks. With his odd ability of speech and lovable clumsiness, Scooby-Doo brings the whole group together. The story focuses on a group of five characters, four teenagers and a dog, on the run after being hunted down for a crime they didn't commit, and being chased by what seems to be ghosts. The characters investigate how this murder happened and who did it while running from specters trying to get rid of them. I imagine the first episode would go something like this. The episode opens with Shaggy complaining to Scooby about going back to school yet again on Halloween. I mean, seriously, Scoob. What are we going to school for on Halloween? It's like the most important holiday of the year. Right up, row. But rude might help. It always does. But I guess we might as well get it over with. I can't run away from all my problems. See you soon, Scoops. I'll pick you up for the party later. Shaggy leaves and goes out to school. When he gets there, he's bombarded by a crowd following Fred and Daphne. The two separate and join their cliques at their lockers. Daphne, what are you dressing up as for the party? Wonder Woman, obviously. Same as every year. Daphne opens her locker and a note falls out. It is an invitation to a haunted house. Is that for the Crystal Cove House of Haunts, TM? Don't be afraid to run and act like you never saw that. Why would I do that? I ain't afraid of no ghost. Plus, getting haunted would be fun. Meanwhile, Fred finds that he's been invited as well. No way, dude. Are you going to do it? Of course. Everyone's going to see me get through it, and they're going to love me even more, and it's going to be extremely gnarly. Guys, Daphne and Fred got invited to the Crystal Cove House of Haunts TM. Jen, they've been talking about this thing all week. Who cares about the stupid haunted house anyway? The same thing happens every year. Four to five kids go in there, get scared, and run out before they get to even half of it. Velma opens her locker and another invitation falls out. Great. What an amazing coincidence. You should go. Why? You might get a chance to finally talk to Daphne and Fred again. They don't care about me. They're cool now. They have more important things to do. Maybe, but you'll never know if you don't try. I guess you're right. Insert whistling here. Shaggy finds that he has also been invited. The Crystal Cove House of Haunts TM? With, like, ghosts? I don't know about this. Sounds real freaky deaky. I'll have to ask Scooby when I get home. 
Don't tell me you're scared, Shaggy. Ah! Velma? In the flesh. You got invited to the hound haunted house too? Ooh, girl, sorry, honey. Yeah, but I don't think I'm going. Why not? Are you scared? Yes. It'll be fine. Ghosts aren't real anyway. Shaggy goes home to pick up Scooby for the haunted house. Scooby, you ready to go? Rup! One thing, though. We may or may not be going to a haunted house. Rut, Rye! It'll be fine. Velma says ghosts aren't real. We'll just go in there, walk through, and get out. Then everybody will cheer us on and we'll be Coolsville royalty. Riri? Hopefully. Now let's go. They leave and go to the Crystal Cove House of Haunts TM. Daphne and Fred are pleasantly surprised to see them. Velma? Shaggy? I haven't seen you guys in ages. Yeah, well, we figured you'd been pretty busy. Too busy for my best friend? Never. Daphne hugs Velma and moves on to Shaggy. Shaggy, you're like eight foot now. And Scooby, you've done some good growing yourself. I'm so excited to see all of you. Daph? Oh, there you are. Fred, look who it is. Fred stays silent, appearing to have zoned out. Fred? Oh, sorry. Hi, guys. Maybe I'm forgetting something, but shouldn't there be crowds of people around here cheering us on or something? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, but maybe something happened. Maybe they're right. Or we're early. The others drop their jaws. Did he, did he just talk? I don't remember Scooby talking. Me either. Eh, not the worst thing I've seen. Come on, guys. Scooby's talking is perfectly normal at his age. Yeah, if he's an alien... This isn't important. We need to focus on becoming legends. The first people to ever make it all the way through the Crystal Cove House of Haunts TM. You scared death? In your dreams. The group goes inside the house. It's really dark in here. Shaggy and Scooby's teeth chatter as they walk through the Crystal Cove House of Haunts TM. It was mainly uneventful other than small noises until they made it into one room. As they walked in, the door slammed shut behind them. Close the door. My glasses! I can't see without my glasses! Ah! Velma is grabbed and begins to be pulled away from the group by some sort of invisible force. Velma, what's... My gosh. Daphne and Fred try to pull Velma away while Shaggy and Scooby are drawn to something else. Uh, guys? As they finally get Velma down, they look in the next room and see two bodies on the ground. Whoa. Just whoa, Daphne? I don't know what to say. You see two dead bodies lying on the ground. What are you supposed to say? Well, jeepers, I hope I don't get blown on my boots. Wait, what's happening? Oh, you still don't have your glasses. I'll grab them for you. Fred reaches down to grab Velma's glasses next to the bodies, which are now covered in blood. He hands them to her. Wait a second. That's Alyssa Melton, my dad's assistant. And my mom's PR manager, Karen Sandler. What's going on? Fred knelt down to inspect the bodies as the police burst through the door. You're under arrest! Fred panics and bolts for the door. The others follow. As they're chased, they go outside and hop into Fred's van. Fred forgets all his driving lessons and bolts down the streets like a madman. Meanwhile, the group discusses the situation. You know we'll probably be faced for more charges for resisting, right? We don't have time to worry about that right now. Who could have done this? Do you think we were targeted? I mean, you said it was your parents' workers, so it's possible. What? You were supposed to say no and that I'm being delusional. Who would want to frame us anyway? We're innocent teenagers. Well, we don't know for sure. Our hope is lost. Man, this blows. Right or right this at all. Fred turned and drove off the road, hoping to lose the police. Where are we going? A few weeks ago, my dad and his assistant and your mom's PR manager visited the local historical house of Cools Co.'s first mayor, Mary Bennett. Maybe there we can find a place to stay and find some clues as to what happened. And so they went and eventually made it to the house. They went inside and saw a dirty, old, abandoned building, surprisingly worse than the Crystal Crow's House of Haunts TM. They continued on, still worried about the situation. Well, what do we do now? I think we should, um, split up and look for clues. I'll go with Daphne and Velma, and Scooby and Shaggy can go together. Okay, Red. And so the group split up. We should have just ignored the invite and went to the regular party. 
I bet everyone at school tomorrow will be talking about how it was the joint, and I won't even be there to hear it because I'll be running from the cops. I know this looks like a massive bummer, but at least once we clear our names, we'll be able to go back home scot-free, right? And we get to solve a mystery, which I know you love, Velma. And Daphne, this is the most threatening and exciting thing that's ever happened to you. I do love danger. Exactly! We've got this. Uh, you guys? You should probably come see this. I hate this, Scoob. First, we go to this super creepy house instead of the off-the-hook cool party. Then we get framed for a murder, and we have to run from the man. And now we're in another freaky house getting, like, hunted down. I want to roll home. I know, Scoob. Ruh roll What is it, Scoob? Shaggy looks behind him and sees a ghost. Ah! Did you hear that? The others go to see what's going on and are chased by the ghost. Wait a second, is that Mary Bennett? Looks like it. it. Must be a ghost. And it was probably ghost trying to take Velma too. Wait, no, 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 no. Ghosts aren't real. I think your facts are being proved wrong right now, Velma. Rest rocking, we're running! Right, I... Daphne is snatched by the ghost. Daphne! You can have this daughter of degenerates back when pigs fly. Well, now we've got to make a plan to get Daphne back. Why don't we just make a trap? I mean, I can make a little doohickey with this and make a sorry spread. But there's no way you can just take a bunch of random this. stuff you found in a room and just make a trap just like that. And done. What? How did you do that? No time. We need a plan. Like, right now, please. We need to find a way to distract her so we can push her down and get her in the chair. Yeah, but how will we distract her? They all look at Scooby. So what exactly are you going to do? I'm going to take you out. It's your mother's punishment for separating what was the Great Cool's Cove. So I'm in grave danger, and I either have to try to escape or wait for my brave boyfriend to come save me? Awesome! Ray Rary! What? Whoa. Are you talking? Well, obviously. Whoa. Of course this daughter of degenerates would bring some demon dog. Stay back, you fiend. Mary starts moving back, tripping on marbles and eventually falling into the chair, which is locked under her arms and legs. We don't have enough evidence to prove that ghosts aren't real. I'm serious, Fred. There's no way that's a real... Oh, look, your thing worked. Knew it. All I'm saying is, if you try to take it off her face, it'll be a mask. Fine. Well, if I'm correct, the person under the mask should be... Fred takes off the mask, showing that it is... Andrea? Who? One of da Fred's dad's workers. Why? We know your parents have been fighting for as long as they've been in charge of Coolsville and Crystal Cove, so it's not strange that they would try to attack each other. And one of his employees trying to take down one of your father's enemies as a way to get attention isn't too strange either. Plus, in reality, Mary Benton wouldn't have grabbed either of you because she loves kids. Even if she were vengeful, she'd take it out on your parents. Yeah, maybe I did. So what? I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. They all start to walk out as Andrea calls for them. Wait, you're not just going to leave me here, are you? Come back! Well, at least we did something productive today. And tomorrow we clear our names. Hopefully. scooby doo doo Whatever, you know what it sounds like. Meanwhile... Four teenagers known as Daphne Blake, Fred Jones, Norville Rogers, and Velma Dinkley, two of which are the children of our beloved leaders of Coolsville and Crystal Cove, are being chased down by the police after murdering two women, Alyssa Melton and Karen Sandler, tonight on Halloween. They are still on the run and the police are asking if you see something, say something. Warning, though they're teens, they may still be dangerous. Be safe out there. Anyways, next we have Poolsville's local ice cream truck. People have claimed it blows Crystal Cove's ice cream truck out of the water. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed my little idea and have a wonderful rest of your day, night, afternoon, or whatever. I need to hurry up and get this out because it's two weeks late now. Deuces!